Guys, I'm here in the little town of Leland in the midst of the traffic, the new traffic pattern, which is fantastic. It's all right, it actually works okay. And I am getting ready to go to a job where I have to remove one of the thermostats because there's two that control one system and it's not zoned. So it's kind of like a cluster. So I'm gonna try to straighten it out and make it so it's a little bit more functional because it's been doing some kind of crazy shit they say lately. So we're gonna take a look at it. This is our thermostat that works. We're gonna be make sure this is the only one. Guys, as you can see, we have all of our thermostat connections here. Goodman units have them on the outside a lot of times. So, you can see there's one, two wires. From here, you have our float switch wire and this is yellow wires coming from the switch in the pan. And then one going up, which goes to the line set. So we know that one's for the line set. We can figure that the one going back that way is for the upstairs timer stand. The one coming back this way goes with this duct downstairs. So I'm going to separate the downstairs one, leave just the upstairs one so we can test the system with that in place. What's funny is we have a compressor wire that only comes from upstairs, downstairs, and the heat, it's like it only comes from, it only... <laughs> The electric heat only comes from, what well, comes from both locations, but the compressor only comes from downstairs. And the reversing valve. I might take a look at that thermostat and see what that's all about. Alright, we have three wires. One that went to the fan, one that went to the common, one that went to red, I think. That is the wildest thing. Because they got it wired in to red here, blue, and fan. So it wouldn't have controlled anything but the fan itself. We're going to take this wire out of the equation. That's going to the other thermostat. these wires here go to the outdoor unit still keep this one on the float switch again what I'm unwiring just the outdoor unit wires right now heat pump has five wire going outside Typically. And now take those off. These good men units. This brown wire here is emergency heat, but it deadheads inside, so we don't need it. We have these wires, we're gonna have to get the other ones off. So, we're gonna need a red. And hopefully, we can get these out of the wall downstairs. A yellow, an orange, and we may or may not need a brown. I'll probably just jump those together. Now we can wire it like it's one stab. The one side of the float switch wired in here. The other side will be wired here. I'm breaking it through the contractor circuit. 
I just do that so people have the fan running in their house in case it gets real hot and they have to wait. The only other wire running directly from the thermostat to the outdoor unit is the reversing valve, which will be orange here. However, we have our reds, which is 24 volt hot. green wires which is our fan our white wires which are W2 signal for the heat strips kind of squirrely looking And what we're going to do is go downstairs and make sure that all these can be drawn out of the wall. I guess I'm being having wishful thinking, believing I can pull those out of the wall. So hopefully that's the case. Turn it on, so I'm going to see once we got the power on what it does. Okay, so far so good. The fan is running. Nothing else is running. So, all right, let me try, try each one of the cycles and see how we do. Degrees outside, it's a little cold for testing AC. 46.6 degrees in the supply that's upstairs in the bathroom. And for reference, that's upstairs, about halfway across the house. 47.2 over 119, very low temperatures because we have a 69 degrees. And then it's so about 10 degrees subcooling and a 30 degrees superheat. They're about a little bit less than 30. So not too bad really for a day like today because you're going to have a high super heat because it's so cold outside and it's warmer inside. So just want to check it out. So I'm not actually really alarmed by that even though it's running below freezing because it is so cold outside today. The answer to sort of simulate a warmer day to see what would happen and to sort of simulate how this thing's going to perform when it's warmer outside. You see it's 53 right now. But we're up to 83, 152 on the head pressure, which according to our last, we were about 20 over ambient. So that puts us at around 63 degrees outside. Now we're up to 54 on the suction pressure. We've come up about six or seven psi. So we can assume that we're in a normal summer day. It's gonna be above freezing, obviously. I think we're still a little bit low on charge, but you really can't charge it on a day like today. This is sort of like the filled piece charging blanket on top here. Just cutting off the discharge is a little bit better in my opinion because you still have a, a flow through the condenser on all sides instead of blocking off the condenser. So that's about as high as we're going to go unless I blank it off a little bit more, which I can. But I think we're going to be okay for the Christmas party. We've got 95 degrees on the supply air right now. It's still coming up. We just started it a couple minutes ago. 209 on the head pressure. This is heating. 58.3. We have 128 on the hot gas line, which is where our blue fill peach clamp is. And we have 78.6 on the liquid return, refrigerator returning on the Hillmore clamp. So right now we're just going to let it kind of get running up and get going. It looks like it's going to be all right. Already above freezing outside, which is it's, uh, it's warm enough out here. We got 52 degrees. I guess it ain't warmed up too much. So we'll let it roll for a little bit, and if it looks okay, we're gonna be done with this one. Guys, so we had that thermostat that I had to uh, remove the one in the downstairs, which was an old Focus Pro 3000, I believe. It was just doing some crazy shit. I mean, it would, they said it would throw the auxiliary heat on randomly. And I'm not quite sure why that stat started doing the stuff that it did. The display was messed up on the thermostat, so it could have been they had it set for auxiliary heat that didn't show up, that it popped up. I'm not sure. But I removed that thermostat because this was an old, it, it's not a zone system. It's like, uh, we know how the Testo Smart Probes are like the poor man's Acnex. 
Well, this setup was the poor man's zone system. It didn't have any zone dampers, it didn't have any zone control board, but it had two thermostats, one upstairs and one downstairs. Now, a lot of people are going to know what this is right off the bat because they've seen it a lot of times. Where they have the thermostat downstairs as your main thermostat. It controls your compressor, your auxiliary heat, all your good stuff, all the things that make your house hot and cold. But this one had the thermostat upstairs as well. And all it did was bring the fan on. So if it gets hot upstairs or it gets cold upstairs, it brings the fan on and circulates air around. The idea is it takes some of that air from downstairs and moves it around, or at the very least, you know, moves air around, makes it a little bit more comfortable. So it doesn't do any heating or cooling, theoretically. It just turns the fan on and off. I doesn't even turn it off. It really just turns it on when it needs some sort of conditioning. So what I did was I took out the old thermostat, that Focus Pro, and then I wired that one upstairs, which is one of the original stats for the system. That's just the one they decided to keep. I asked if they wanted a new thermostat. They said no. I said, okay, well, it works, so it's really up to you. So I wired it up started up we checked the cooling as you saw the heating the emergency heat and all of it worked just fine so i let it go with that the one thing that they're going to have to adjust to is the fact that now their temperature is being sensed from upstairs on that thermostat and that thermostat is deciding whether it's going to be heating or cooling instead of the downstairs so probably a little bit of an adjustment to get used to that but otherwise it should stop presenting such a problem low voltage wise and they can control it a little bit easier without having to try to figure out which thermostat does what because they were genuinely confused and I didn't really know what did what until I got into it and started taking the wires apart. So that one's all sorted out and done and I will see you guys on the next one.